Hi, I'm Alan from 123 Code, and in this video, we're going to be going through a Scratch tutorial. Scratch is a visual programming language that was developed by MIT. It's designed for 8 to 16 year olds, but really, people of all ages can use it. Using it, you can create your own codes to create games, animations, interactive stories, anything really. And one of the great things about it is it's completely free. The Scratch website is located at scratch.mit.edu or you can just Google Scratch and you'll find it there in the results. So the Scratch website is where we create our coding projects. There's also a whole community behind it. So people, when you create your own projects, you can publish them and for other people to see, to comment on and so on. You can create your own Scratch account by clicking on the Join Scratch button here. You'll choose a username and enter in a password. You'll need an email address as well if you are signing up. It is a good idea to create an account because it allows you to save your projects and come back to them and work on them and so on. So to create a new project, you click on the Create button in the top toolbar. This is going to load up the Scratch Project Editor. When you first load it up, if you're not signed in, it will show some tutorials. Um, I'm not going to go through them now, so I'm going to X these to close them out. And let's have a little tour, a little walk around of the, the screen of the project editor. So on the right hand side, we've got the stage area. This is where we add all our characters or sprites, as they're called in, in Scratch, to whatever we're making, be it a game or an animation, so on. As you can see at the start, by default, a cat sprite is added. So anytime you create a new project, this default scratch character, this cat, will be added. If you want to get rid of that any or any other sprite that you do add, you can just click on the little trash icon in the sprite list down here. So we'll get rid of the cat. So to add in a new sprite, you've got different options. Then the bottom right here, we've got a little cat icon here, and this is for adding a new sprite. So you can choose a sprite from a library. So if I open up the sprite library, you can see there's lots and lots of different sprites uh, that come within the library. And there's different categories. So if you want to click on sports, for instance, it'll just show you the sprites for sports. So let's go ahead and add in a soccer ball here just to see it go in. So we can see it in the stage area here. The other options for adding in sprites are to paint your own sprite. So if I click on the paintbrush here. This will load up the sprite editor. So in here, you can draw your own sprites um, and add them in. So I'll quickly draw a little character. There we go. And we can see as I create the sprite, it goes into the, the stage area alongside my soccer ball sprite. So again, I'm going to just delete that sprite. So I'm going to trash it by clicking on the trash icon. So the other options are you can get a surprise sprite. So if you click on that, it should add in a random sprite from the sprite library. As you can see them being added in there. Or you can upload a sprite from your own computer. So if you have an image file on your own computer, and um, so say you want to go get a character, you know, you Google and get an image and download it to your computer, you can upload it into your project and display it out as a sprite and get it to, to, in, to, to do whatever you want within your project. So let's now take a look at the actual code blocks themselves. The code blocks are what a code block is. It's an instruction. So it's an instruction that you give to a sprite to carry out. So you've got different types of code blocks. So we've got motion blocks, and these are for making things move around the screen. So to move a particular way, to turn uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, um, and different things like that. You've got looks toolbox. These are for changing the looks of a sprite. So to make it bigger or smaller, to change its color, to make it disappear or reappear. You have sound blocks for adding sound to your project. So you might have two uh, sprites bouncing off each other and you want to play a sound effect when that happens. The events blocks are to start off your code, to trigger uh, your set of code. So when the green flag clicked, your code will begin, or when you press a certain key on your keyboard, or when you even click on a sprite, 
uh, you can get codes to run. So these are the events toolbox and you'll notice the shape of them. They cannot have something joined at the, at the top. They can only have something joined underneath them. So they are really the starting blocks for your code. The control blocks are to do things like repeat a block of code, to repeat it a set number of times or to repeat it forever. You also have your if then blocks in here. So your if then or your if then else. These blocks test a certain condition or conditions. And if that's true, then the, the code blocks you put inside them will run. Or for the if then else, if it's true, if your condition is true, it'll run the code blocks uh, just underneath. Else it'll do something else and you can put in different code blocks. We have sensing blocks, so you can sense different things within your project. So if a sprite touches another sprite, if your sprite touches a certain color or if it's a certain distance to it, so something else on the screen, you can sense these things. And these are normally, these can be the conditions in an if then else and then run certain code. And then you also have operators, which have some uh, mathematical operators in there. You've got random. Uh, random blocks for picking random numbers. Variables are for creating a variable is something that stores a value. So take, uh, for example, in a game, you might have a score variable. So your score variable would start off, you'd set it to zero at the beginning. And then within your game, each time you should get a point, you can use the change variable block. So change your score by one and so on. You can also create lists within your game. So if you want to have a list like a top score, so add in uh, different entries to that list, you can make a list. And also you have my blocks where you can create your own custom blocks and then add in blocks underneath. So if you want to run something again and again, a, a set of uh, blocks, you can create your own block. Um, call it say uh, bounce off the wall and that might do you know certain things like get your sprite to turn in a different direction and then move the opposite direction each time you want to run that code you can just bring in your bounce off wall block so let's add some code to actually make our soccer ball sprite uh, do something so we're going to get it to bounce around the screen so again we're going to use an event block to start off our code. So I'm going to drag in a when green flag clicked block and add it in to my code area here. So this big white square in the middle is where we add in our code. So we're going to make it move first of all. So we'll go into the motion toolbox and we'll drag in and move 10 steps. And you'll notice as I approach and add it or bring it close to the when green flag clicked, you'll see that a kind of shadow appears. That means it's ready to be dropped in and it'll attach to the green flag clicked block. So this is how you add and kind of connect blocks together. So let's just run this code and see what it does. So when green flag clicked, my, my soccer ball should move 10 steps. So each time I click on the green flag, you can just see the soccer ball move a short amount. This block is editable, so I can change the 10 steps to be 150 or any value I want. I'll just move it slightly to the left and start it off. And you'll see each time I click it, it moves 150 steps. So I'm going to change that back to 10. And now I'm going to add in a forever block. So if I bring in the forever block, I'm going to break off my move 10 steps and put it inside the forever block and then attach the forever block to the when green flag clicked. So now what my code is saying is when I click on the green flag, I want the ball to forever move 10 steps. So it will keep on moving 10 steps. So if I click on the green flag, you see it moves over to the edge of the screen till it can't move anymore. And if I go into the motion toolbox, there's a handy block in here called if on edge bounce. I'm going to put that inside. The forever block so what this block here will do if on edge bounce it detects if your sprite is on the edge of the stage area and if it is it will bounce it back across so when i click on the green flag the ball should bounce back and forth i'll stop it there i'm going to just set the uh, the direction of the ball to point downwards so this will kind of make the ball bounce around the screen so there's again in the motion toolbox there's a point in direction 
block. I'm going to drag that and put it directly under the when green flag click. So right at the beginning, I want to point this in the direction and I'll point it 120 degrees. So it should start bounce. It should start moving in this direction and then bounce around the screen as it touches the edge. And there we go. So finally, in this tutorial, let's add in another sprite from the library and get the two sprites to interact. So we'll add in some bananas. And what I'm going to do is if the ball touches the bananas, we'll play a sound. So you might notice that the code that I did add is now gone from the screen. That's because we're looking at the code for the banana sprite, which has the blue highlight around it. If I click on the soccer ball sprite in my sprite list here, you'll see that my code for the soccer ball is still there. So let's go back and add some code to the bananas. So what we're going to do is we're going to forever check if the uh, sprite, the bananas are touching the soccer ball. And if they are, let's just play a sound something quite simple. So again, we'll start off with a when green flag clicked block. And we're going to use an if then block to test whether the two sprites are touching each other. So let's go into the sensing toolbox. And you can see here we've got a, a block that says touching mouse pointer. But if you notice, it's got a little white arrow. This means it's a menu, so I can change and give me different options for this block. So I'm going to drag this block in. And as you're going to see, it matches the shape of the little kind of gap in between the if and the then. This is where we put in the condition that we are testing. So we're going to test if the bananas is touching the soccer ball, then whatever we put in here will happen. And what we want is just to play a sound. So there's a chomp sound. So we'll do the play sound chomp until done. And we'll put that in. And we need to add in just one more code block. We don't want to just check this once. So if I was to run it like this, when green flag clicked, if touching soccer ball, then play the sounds. So at the start, they're not touching each other. So if I click on the green flag, I'll even move this into the way, you will see that it did not play the sound. That's because we want to keep on checking this. If I just put it in, a, in at the beginning, at the beginning, it will check it. It will say, no, it's not touching the soccer ball and it won't happen. But what I need to do is forever check it. So I'm going to go to the control toolbox again. I'm going to bring in a forever block and put my if inside it. So I'm going to forever check if. So I'm going to keep on checking if the soccer ball is touching the banana. So hopefully this should work when I click on the green flag. We'll see each time it touches, the two sprites touch off each other. Let's try and in the way it plays the sound. So that is how you add in uh, code blocks and add them together and put them in for different sprites. Finally, we're just going to take a quick look at adding in a background or backdrop as it's called in Scratch. So again, you, we've got a backdrop library. So I'm going to go down to the bottom right here to this kind of picture icon and then click on the magnifying glass and this will open up the library. Um, and I, again, you, there's lots and lots of different backdrops you can add in. There's different um, different categories that you can click on. There's also a search box. So if I want to check, uh, click on space. So if you want to use the moon, I'll click on that and that puts in a backdrop uh, in the background there. Similar to sprites, you can paint your own backdrop. You can add in a random one or you can upload uh, an image file from your own computer. So that's a quick introduction to Scratch. I hope it gives you a good idea of what Scratch is and how you use it. If you want to check out some of our other videos, we've got lots of different projects that have the step-by-step -step instructions, how to create different games and animations and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get our weekly coding projects, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next, just comment in the video below.